Hey there, I'm Raquel Richards, and this is What Are You Drinking? The pod on alcohol. Hey there, this is What Are You Drinking? The pod on alcohol. I'm Raquel Richards. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Do not drink and drive and don't drink if you're underage in the country, state, or province you live in. Mocktails. Let's talk about mocktails. They're huge right now in the alcohol industry. Many booze companies are making non-alcoholic drinks or low in ABV. Well, what's ABV? ABV is alcohol by volume. And mocktails are great for people who don't drink, pregnant, or are the designated driver. And it's good for those who are cutting back or taking a part in dry January. Mocktails are good for that. So in case you're not aware of what dry January is, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's the month the average drinker stops drinking alcohol for the month of January after the festive holiday season. I've tried it. Hasn't worked. So maybe next year I'll do a whole month on mocktails and alcohol-free brews. There's a lot there to, to cover with mocktails. As I mentioned, they're very popular and uh, a lot of people are drinking them and uh, they're no different than the ones with the alcohol in it, just without the alcohol. But let's continue. Um, I'm not going to review any particular mocktail brand, but rather I'm going to talk about them and offer up two mocktail recipes. And one of them is my favorite. And if you've seen the What Are You Drinking Instagram, then you may have an idea of what mocktail I'm talking about. So as I mentioned, mocktails are non-alcoholic cocktails or beverages, and they can be bought at your liquor store or your grocery store, and you can create them yourself by gathering all of the ingredients you need. And I always say, make a drink yourself. It tastes so much better, doesn't have all of that preservative crap in it that your body just doesn't need, especially when you're consuming alcohol. But here we're not consuming alcohol, so even better, make it from scratch. And you may have seen them. I mean, they're offered at restaurants, they're offered at parties or other social events, and they're made with a combination of fruit juices, syrups, sodas, and other non-alcoholic ingredients to create a refreshing and flavorful drink. And get this, you'll look cool, let's face it, and you'll be keeping your cool when out and enjoying a mocktail. Mocktails can be served in various styles, such as on the rocks, blended or shaken, just like a cocktail. They are garnished with fruit slices, herbs, or other decorative elements to enhance their presentation and appeal. Now, some popular mocktails include the famous Shirley Temple, Virgin Mary, and Pina Colada mocktail. Now, here's a little personal story. I just have to share this. When I was a kid, about five or six, I'd go with my parents to this an Italian restaurant in the beach here in Toronto. It's no longer around, but when we went there, I'd always order a Shirley Temple. I felt so grown up. I remember looking around the restaurant and thinking to myself, look, all of these adults are looking at me drinking an adult drink. Little do they know I'm five. <laughs> looking back, of course, the adults probably weren't looking at me because I was drinking an adult drink. Okay, well, maybe some in case they didn't know what a Shirley Temple was. I just felt so adult drinking them and always look forward to going to this restaurant to have one. Now, as an adult, when I was a bartender, I'd make myself one because I still love them. I still love them. And when a kid came in and wanted a Shirley Temple or wasn't sure what they wanted to drink, that they wanted something kind of fancy, I'd always ask, do you want a fancy drink? Nine times out of 10, the kids always said yes. And the parents agreed once I told them that it would be a Shirley Temple. Always get things by the parents. You always have to ask the parents. So I decorate those temples right up with cherries, fancy umbrellas, and an orange. And you know what? I never had a kid leave unhappy. Yeah, memories of me and my Shirley Temple. Okay, so <laughs> I digress. Mocktails. They can be created from any cocktail. That's right. Any cocktail can be a mocktail. All that's eliminated is the shot or two of the booze. They're also a fun and creative way to enjoy a flavorful and refreshing beverage without the effects of the booze. 
and uh, that's uh, something that people are enjoying. As I said, it'll look like you're drinking but without the effects of alcohol and no hangover the next day. Well, okay, you know, maybe a, a sugar hangover. I mean, it depends on the mocktail type and how many you had. Um, and let's face it, we are social beings, so when drink and food and company are involved, we tend to over drink and overeat. So remember, mocktails still have the sugar content without the alcohol, so you have that. <laughs> so if you're sensitive to it, you might not feel so good the next day just due to the sugar if you drink a lot. But you're not supposed to drink a lot, remember? So, you know, mocktails. I mentioned at the top, like who can enjoy them, you know, and it's great for those who are underage, like I mentioned with the Shirley Temple story. And, you know, it's great for family gatherings for the uh, youngins to have something to drink and feel like they're part of the party. <laughs> so um, non-alcoholic beers, I'm not going to necessarily go into beers here, but uh, the non-alcoholic beers, they still have their brewing stages and include barley, yeast, hops, and any citrus added. And by the way, just another little thing here, if you have problems falling asleep, try to get your hands on some real hops, real hops. They're like little balls, they're green, they, they, they taste awful, they don't smell that great, but drop them into some hot water and create a tea. Trust me, you'll be out like a light. So mocktails in general, they don't require distillation because they don't contain alcohol and a drink contains alcohol requires separating alcohol from a mixture of liquids by heating and cooling the mixture to produce a concentrated solution of alcohol. Non-alcoholic wine. Stills require vintification, but the alcohol is removed through vacuum distillation called reverse osmosis or spinning cone technology. Non-alcoholic wine must legally contain less than 0.5 ABV alcohol by volume which is the Canadian legal limit for a beverage to be considered non-alcoholic. But a mocktail, because you're creating it, just from the juices and the fruit, will be completely alcohol-free. But I'll be doing future pods on non-alcoholic beer and wine in the future. So this pod is just about mocktails and two popular ones that are easy to create. And one of them is my favorite. So here's a good question. How did the mocktail name become to be? How the story goes is that Shirley Temple, there she is again, was the original, the OG of mocktails, if you will, back in the 1930s. There's a variety of competing claims that the drink's origins and several restaurants and hotels in Beverly Hills and even Hawaii say they invented the drink for the temple when she visited with her parents. Miriam Webster notes that the first known use of the mocktail term is as early as 1916. The Shirley Temple is probably the most famous mocktail ever, and with all this talk about it, you may want to know what's in this sweet temple of a mocktail, and it's quite simple. A mix of ginger ale and grenadine, with a squeeze of lemon or lime to top, and a maraschino cherry. And since I mentioned maraschino cherries, Let's debunk the urban myth that it takes seven years to digest a maraschino cherry. It doesn't. You digest a maraschino just as you would any other fruit or candy. I still call it a fake cherry. Definitely not a real cherry. It's very sweet, but it doesn't take seven years to digest. So when you're having mocktails and you're out and about and you're going to be eating something, uh, just like cocktails, they have their food pairings and the reason is that it all comes down to the flavor of the mocktail and the flavor of the food. Since I'm reviewing mocktails, and two in particular, you'll notice the food pairings are the same as if the mocktail was, well, a cocktail. So I've mentioned at the top of the pod that I'd be letting you know the two popular mocktails, one of them being my favorite. So the first one I'm going to mention isn't my favorite. I do definitely enjoy it, but it's just not the favorite one. And that is the Virgin Pina Colada. It's refreshing, tropical drink, and can be enjoyed all year round. And you can make a pitcher of it to enjoy with guests or mix a single one and enjoy. It only contains two main ingredients, pineapple juice and coconut cream. Gotta have the ice, of course. And garnish with pineapple wedges and or cherries, maybe not a maraschino, but I'll leave that to you. And you can find the full recipe on our Instagram at what are underscore you drink it. 
The other popular mocktail, and my favorite, is the national drink of Canada, the Caesar. Mm. It has five ingredients, Clamato juice, and please forgive me if I can't say this right because we all get this wrong, Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce. I know some of you are listening to that and saying it perfectly the way it's meant to be said, and hot sauce and salt and pepper. Now, no, there are many ways to make a Caesar, and I'm going to discuss Caesar all on its own in a future episode. You'll also need ice, celery stock, a lime wedge for garnish, and you can go crazy with Caesars. And if you're Canadian, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The sky is the limit because it's a drink that's a meal. That's the story behind it, too. Not the full story. We'll get into that later. But you can always top it off with a slice of pizza, cheese, olives, cocktail onions. The sky is the limit when it comes to a Caesar, but I love it. And I love having it virgin or with alcohol. It doesn't matter. Some people have with gin, some people have vodka. I don't mind having it as a virgin. I find it just simply delicious. And you can find my recipe for a Caesar also on Instagram at what are underscore you drinking. And you'll be able to find that on the Instagram and also in the links in the bio for the show. So, I mean, what is the price of mocktails? It's interesting because when you're out at a restaurant, pub or club, they'll run you the same price or less a buck or two as a cocktail version. And you're like, what? I'm not drinking alcohol. Why you ask? Like, why? Well, the reason is it still takes pretty much the same amount of time to create and uses the same ingredients minus the booze to make the mocktail. I get it. I also don't understand it either. But you go to a bar and you order a Coke, let's say, and you tell them that you're the designated driver. So you get to drink the Coke for two or three dollars a glass. I don't know if a lot of restaurants are still doing that, but they've done that. And you say the same thing and you, you know, you order a virgin pina colada, but yet you're charged six to nine dollars. I know, WTF, right? So it's also because mocktails are trending. And like I said, it takes the same amount of time and the ingredients minus the booze to create this mocktail. But when you are out at a bar next time, ask about the two to three dollar Coke thing or Pepsi thing and um, see when you're the designated driver and see if they give that to you. Not sure if that's still around. And there you have it. There's a little bit there on mocktails. So if you feel like uh, having one and, you know, breaking out the juices and the syrups and the sodas, go for it. Be creative. Be creative. It's it's lots of fun. So do you want another drink? Well, let's be sure to socialize on What Are You Drinking on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Links are in the bio. Thanks for listening. And until next time, cheers. <laughs>